According to Jonathan Gold in the Los Angeles Times, Too Short is the acknowledged West Coast maestro of the pimp rhyme, and he'd established a hip-hop empire on the obscene street corner snap, smart but primitive litanies of obscenity and mayhem. Todd Shaw based the rap identity Too Short on the pimp tradition, which gained popularity in the 1970s thanks to the black exploitation trend, which was typified in movies like Shaft. The character is one that is viewed differently by black viewers. Some listeners view him as a demeaning caricature of black manhood and an affront to black women, while others have flocked to record stores, embracing what they see as an image of a strong, defiant black man. Each team has produced too short a significant phenomenon because, despite the fact that the majority of his songs are too f***ly explicit for radio play, they dispute about what he means in his rap narratives about and and increased the sales of his records. Shaw comes from a far different background than the movie heroes he emulates. He was raised in a stable middle-class environment in Los Angeles in the middle of the 1960s. His mother spent 30 years working for the IRS before retiring in the 1990s when her son built her a house in Atlanta. Both of his parents were accountants. Contrary to the anti-feminist stance espoused in his lyrics, Short has kept a close and respectful bond with his mother. He said, We're excellent friends, always have been, to vibe writer Laura Jameson. Our partnership never experienced any tension at all. But his mother finds his mouth offensive. He admitted, I get tremendously uneasy when I know my mother is in the crowd. He confessed to Jameson. She'll come to me after and say, you got a foul mouth. He built the pimp persona. Shaw had to intentionally seek for the pimp character, in other words. It became more available to him after he relocated from Los Angeles to Oakland, California, especially since he decided to fully immerse himself in the city street life. In 1992, Short called Oakland a pimp town in an interview with Havelock Nelson for Billboard. In the 1980s, that mood began to dissipate, but it was still present in 1992. According to Nelson, Short's pimp position is a product of having read black exploitation works by authors Iceberg Slim and Donald Goings, and absorbing the vibe of his Bay Area environs. According to Ronan Rose's 1995 article for The Source, Short's persona was inspired by the pimps in 1970s movies and TV shows, as well as by Richard Pryor's early comedic routines. According to Short, everyone back then was just interested in pimps. In old pictures I shot when I was a youngster, I used to want to wear large pimp hats. Before I could walk straight, I learned how to pimp walk, Shaw. For the record, Todd Shaw was born sometime in the 1960s in Los Angeles, California. He was raised in Oakland, California. His parents were accountants. In high school, he and his friend Freddie B. started making tapes of their raps, which were primarily freaky tales of sexual adventures. They sold the tapes on the street before making albums through the independent label 75 Girls Records, 1983-88. They also established their own production company, Dangerous Music, and in 1987 they were signed by Jive, a division of RCA. By 1995, three albums had achieved platinum status, Life Is. Get Him Where You Fit In, Too Short, Short Dogs in the House, and Record Label Jive may be found at 137 to 139 West 25th Street, New York, New York. 10001 grew into his street name in high school when it looked like his development had stopped at 5 feet 2 inches. The core of Short's career was laid out by Jeff Chang in a Vibe article who recalled that the rapper established his apparently unshakable fan base with the freaky tracks and others like them. The freaky tales Chang alludes to were a mainstay of Short's high school raps. They were vignettes of his purported extramarital encounters with an apparently limitless number of voracious women stitched together. Shaw lacked the patience and naivete to wait to be found. Instead, he and his friend Freddie B. created and assembled their recordings at home before selling them in Oakland on the streets. Freddie and Short operated as independent musicians for over three years, from 1981 to 1983, making a good living off of Short's X-rated rhymes. 
Between 1983 and 1988, he put out three albums through the modest independent label 75 Girls Records. In addition, starting in 1986, he founded his own record label, Dangerous Music, to fulfill one of his main goals. Of course, the debut album from the company was a collection of rhymes by short titled Born to Mac, which he traditionally sold from the trunk of his car. Before Jive, a division of RCA, took notice and signed short in 1987, Born to Mac and sold 20, 000 copies, an incredible success for a minor label. While offering short major label security, his new residents also agreed not to impose any restrictions on the content of his raps. Jive received material for a new album each year from Short, who continued to be as prolific as ever. The first thing Jive did was reissue Born to Mac in 1989, which helped it become a gold record very soon. The label released Short Dogs in the House in the fall of 1990 and Life Is. Too Short in 1989. Because of the song The Ghetto on the latter album, Short received some crossover notice. The song not only dealt with subjects that were more serious than his typical freaky tales, but it was also clean enough for DJs to play on the radio, garnering the rapper attention that he had previously been unable to obtain. It also helped him reach number 20 on Billboard's Top Pop Albums chart. Mixed reviews before releasing Shorty the Pimp in 1992, Short had a song featured on the soundtrack for New Jack City in 1991. This album entered the Billboard Top 200 at number 6 and descended through the ranks of the R&B albums chart, riding the tail end of Short Dog's momentum. National sales, of course, also attracted national opinion, and not all of it was favorable. Danielle Smith called the 1992 album a female-hating series of tracks throbbing with Short's trademark blend of nonchalance, hefty bass lines, and scornful lyrics in her review for Rolling Stone. If it weren't for the deliberate coldness of his lyrics, you'd assume Short was rhyming by accident. His rhymes flow so naturally, and Short's delivery is so laid-back and listless. The record, according to Nelson, is classic too short, complete with uncensored profanity and crazy stories from the hood. Similar to Short Dog, Shorty the Pimp has a serious side that was motivated by the Los Angeles police beating of Rodney King. I Ain't Mad Slash I'm Just Black is how the song I Want to Be Free finishes, and it has been quoted numerous times in reviews. Leaving this piece aside, Short had already made the decision to distance himself from the ghetto's crossover appeal. He said to Nelson, I was at a stage in my career when I had to question myself, where should I go? I am a platinum-selling musician who has made the decision to go hard. The decision was also driven by commercial considerations because Short stood to lose his core following if he was thought to be pandering to popular culture. Jive CEO Barry Weiss told Nelson that even though they were hoping for another The Ghetto, they are actually relieved that we didn't get one. The street level is where Two Short's appeal lies. The notion that he is selling out is the worst thing you can have with an artist like him. However, he was consistently making sales, even Born to Mac from 1986 was still competitive in 1992's music store bins. Oddly enough, Short's formula works, Chang said in Vibe. He and his music force people to part with their hard-earned money in exchange for unhappiness. Therese cited Short as one of the key components of the Oakland rap sound, which he described as the home of a fledgling hip-hop explosion when he reviewed Get In Where You Fit I Your Rolling Stone in the fall of 1993. Therese said of Short, he's been recording for years, yet he's still got that underground taste, which means he has the ability to capture his ghetto on tape. Short makes no effort to be accessible. He merely opens a door for you into his universe. When you press play, you'll find yourself in the position of a young black lad traveling East Oak Town on a scorching Saturday at around 15 miles per hour while watching the girls pass in shorts. In his article for The Source, Alan Gordon described two shorts album Get In Where You Fit In as a back to basics record, asking, at this stage of his life, what is there left for him to do? He is too firmly entrenched in his habits to begin hopping on any fads or bandwagons that could come his way. 
he won't be after the coveted crossover audience. Gordon was pleased with what he heard on the recording and praised the rapper's music and rhymes, saying that it was a treat to witness Short on top of his Mackin game and that his beats, triple helpings of pure uncut, unlooped funk, were even better. The album topped the R&B chart and into the pop top 10. Life is Too Short Get in where you fit in, and Short Dog finally achieved platinum status, while Shorty the Pimp achieved gold. Dangerous Music Additionally supporting Short's independent label in 1994, Jive gave Dangerous Music several strong assets. By the 1990s, Dangerous had started to realize Short's vision for the group by building its own roster of rap artists. According to Short to Nelson, it was developed as an outlet for the many outstanding artists in the Bay without an outlet. Pooh Man and Ant Banks were already employees of the producing company at that point. Short quickly relocated Dangerous Music to Atlanta. He said that the whole relocation to Atlanta was about money to Ronan Rowe in 1995. Dangerous Music was outgrowing its Oakland site two years ago, a three-bedroom house. However, he did emphasize that it was also about locating a safer home for his mother and brother. In 1995, Cocktails was released to favorable reviews. It was dubbed his most musically seductive yet by Chang, who also noted that the musician prioritizes simple lyrics, fat bass, and graphic sex because those are the skills that pay his bills. S. H. Fernando, Jr., who reviewed the film for the New York Times, described it as classic too short, filled with more macho and misogyny than a porn movie. Thoughtful, melodic grooves, however, that are ideal for cruising on a beautiful afternoon, are hidden behind the raunch. Even Frank Owen, who wrote an article criticizing the album for New York Newsday, concluded with a pat on the back, acknowledging that the rapper's occasionally lackluster delivery, limited vocabulary, and the frequently plotting musical arrangements can't stop the album from impressing with sheer cheek. Wet Dream Rap, The Misogynist Element Despite all the critical and popular success of his work, Too Short has faced ongoing backlash for his unabashedly anti-female lyrics. In her piece for Rolling Stone, Smith voiced much of the frustration with Too Short's persistent misogyny, finding it represented fully in the 1992 release Shorty the Pimp. Describing the lyrics as stuff to busting with lines about sluts and girls riding on short Snoopy, Smith determined that the album is a byproduct of his angry, warranted nightmares, the police, and his angry wet dreams, the bitches. She continued by saying that despite all of its expertly depicted urban male realities, Shorty the Pimp lacks the immediacy required to make its He-Man poetry startling. The disenfranchised young black male and the intrigued young white male are briefly empowered by Short's tunes, but any self-respecting girl is moved to push eject, firmly. His misogyny, which used to be baffling, more taunting than confronting, has gone from disrespectful to dangerous, she declared in her conclusion. Despite the fact that he acknowledges that some young guys listen to my comments and want to start calling their women bitch. As he explained to Ronan Rowe, Short has attempted to distance his villainous persona from his offstage persona in an effort to lessen its impact. He said Rowe, see, I know a lot of guys listen to Too Short and want to be like me. But I'm not this super pimp who is unstoppable and shit. I'm a regular person going about my business and doing what needs to be done. For a 1994 issue of Vibe, Jameson went to meet Short in Oakland, but what she found there was not a pimp at all, but rather a preoccupied inner-city businessman who's had deals, not wheels or women, on his mind. The rapper really told Jameson that he views his stories about women in a very practical sense because they are how he makes a living. Rap was always my hustle and how I got money, he told her. It's too lame to qualify as a work of brilliance. For eight minutes, I ride the tiniest fraction of the funk. Selected Discography Born to Mac Contains Freaky Tales Dangerous Music 1986 Reissued Jive 1989 Life Is Too Short Jive 1989 Short Dogs in the House Includes the Ghetto 
Jive, 1990. Contributor, New Jack City, Soundtrack, 1991. Shorty the Pimp, includes I Want to Be Free, Jive, 1992. Greatest Hits, Volume 1, In a Minute, 1993. Get in Where You Fit In, Jive, 1993. Cocktails, Jive, 1995. Paystyle, Maxi Single, Jive, 1995.